morning. Good morning. Hello, Christine. Good morning, Helen. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Aren't you pleased with the way Lena decorated the church for us? Oh, she loved doing it for lying, Christine. Well, it is a long time. I'm afraid this is for the last time, Herr Foster. Well, not the last time, Heinrich. You'll be coming back too, Altdorf. A stormtrooper goes where he's told. Oh, you're a stormtrooper now, are you? Well, it's a job, Herr Pastor. I've been out of work so long. Yeah, I'm glad you've got it. It'd be fine to be working again. And for Germany, too. And I wish you the best of luck, Heinrich. I shall never be able to thank you enough, you know, for all you've done for me. You will thank me by doing well with your life. Now, goodbye. I'm looking forward to our next meeting. So am I. I shall never be able to thank you enough, you oh, know. Oh, God bless you, God bless you. Good day, Hans. Good day, Phoebe. Morning, Werner. I'm beginning to think my sermons must be pretty good to get you here so often. Yes, I enjoy them very much, sir. Father, Uncle Paul will be waiting. Good heavens. We mustn't keep a general waiting. Particularly this general. British, you're late again. I'm sorry, Paul. Let me pace it up and down here like a confounded sentry. You might have waited inside. What, me? Mm -hmm. Give me the willies. Well, got a kiss from old soldier? <laughs> you look as radiant as a rose it may. Come on, well, come on, don't be saying about your old dame. Don't be late home, you two. I've got something special for dinner. Oh, well, it's a question between his conscience and my stomach. Stomach weight. <laughs> <laughs> Friedrich, what's a good deed for today? But I thought we might call on Frau Kampf. Mm -hmm. It's a good deed. A good deed too good for me. Herr Pastor, Herr Pastor. Oh, this is an infernal door, Pipperman. I was looking for you at the church. An important matter to discuss. You'll excuse us, General? Oh, you can rely on the General's discretion. It's that barmaid at the inn. Oh, it's a shocking story, but of course I've got no actual proof, but it looks to me In as that if... case, why waste your breath repeating it? Yes, but Herr Pastor. Herr Pipperman. I'm sure your dislike of scandal mongering is as great as mine. Good day to you. Where's this rep? Pity it stopped him, though. He was just getting the interesting details. My dear Paul, if I listen to all the village no, gossip. I know, I know, I know. But it's a nice simple piece, that barmaid. A pair of fine legs. No, I haven't noticed them. Pity. Here we are. Well, it's your good deed, you know. I'm going to do some of my sentry stuff. Oh, but you needn't. Uh... Oh, it's too good. Keep you fit. Uh, don't be long. I'm as empty as a drum. It's almost as noisy. <laughs> morning, Clara. Good morning, Herr Pastor. How's your aunt? She's always cheerful when she knows you're coming. Oh. <coughs> Good morning, Franca. Oh, it is nice to see you here, Pastor. You are looking better. We'll be having you in church again soon. <laughs> Here's something to make you feel better still. Thank you. But you shouldn't have done that, Pastor. Oh. Oh, a whole chicken. What a beauty. And what a size. I shall never be able to eat all that. You needn't eat it in one mouthful, you know. If my Erich were here, he would. Uh, he's got such an appetite, that boy. Well, how's he getting on? Oh, he's getting on wonderfully well. I've got a new picture of him. Now, now, now. now. <laughs> There's no need to go racing around the room just because we're talking about your boy. It's on the table there. Oh. Why, he's getting bigger than ever. <laughs> and important, too. Do you know, they've made him one of the special bodyguard of Captain Rome. Oh. I expect he'll be home to see me soon, so I'm knitting this pullover as a surprise for him. You need quite a bit of wool for my Irish, almost twice as much as for anyone else. He's so strong and big, Herr Pastor. You wouldn't believe it, but he takes me up in his arms like as if I were a bundle of feathers and calls me his little mother. <laughs> his little mother. <laughs> I remember when he was a little boy. And all that Erich said was, well, goodness gracious, what's that? I'm afraid that General von Gretchen beating his drum for lunch. I must oh. go. Oh. Now, take good care of yourself. 
I'll be along to see you soon. Thank you, Faustin. Thank you for coming. Must you do this? Yes, of course, Cyril. I'll be back in a moment, and you're as busy with the dinner. No, not that way. Oh, but, Christine, I wanted to ask you something. Yes, what is it? Now, put down one beside each place. How can I talk to you when you won't keep still for a moment? There. That looks right. Oh, no, I forgot the flowers. Oh, Christine, please listen. Oh, I am listening. Well, be serious for a moment. I can't talk to you when you won't keep still. All right, now I'm perfectly serious. What was it you wanted to tell me? Well, you know I'm leaving here tomorrow, and I shall be gone for several weeks, perhaps longer. But there's something I've got to tell you, something I've been wanting to tell you for a long time. Is it so difficult? It is, Christine. I mean, it's difficult to tell you. It's upsetting to have known a girl all your life. Whenever you came home, she was there, just a little bit different, but the same Christine. Part of one's life. Now everything's changed. Has it? You see, if we'd only just met and I'd fallen in love with you, well, it'd be easier to say. But you have said it. Yes. Seems I have. You don't mind, Christine. You know, there should be new words that no one's ever used before. I love you, Christine. I could eat a horse, could you? Yes, I had two in the last walk. Father, Pastor, we've got a surprise for you. Surprise? Nonsense. I've known it for years. Why didn't you ask him months ago? I don't know. I should. No, I shall be sorry to lose you, Christine. But I'm very glad it's you, sir. Well, this calls for a celebration. A snaps? Did you ever know me refused? You're marrying the son of an old drunk, my dear. Pity, but the regiment. Uh, oh, no, let me do that. Look, <laughs> look, it is empty. I opened the pot and my beautiful chicken has gone. Nineteen years I've been with you here, Pastor, but this is the end. I can set a trap to stop the mice from taking my food, but what can I do about you? Oh. Good Lord, you haven't finished the dinner. Who was it this time, Father? Frank, um, you ought to be horsewhipped. Don't worry, Uncle Paul. I've learned to keep something in reserve. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Didn't seem so very funny at the time, you know. How did I know she was the Colonel's daughter? Paul, Paul. Well, it's all right, don't worry. She'll soon learn a thing or two. Marrying into my family. I hear we're going to have some stormtroopers stationed in the village. Stormtroopers? Rubbish. A lot of riffraff in uniform. Created an awful lot of trouble in Berlin, you know. Don't you think those stories are exaggerated? Oh, not a bit. Got friends in the ministry. They couldn't stand them. Well, I suppose such a vast change of administration is bound to be within some early violence. Well, we haven't felt much of it here. Well, I don't believe in being dictated to by an ex-corporal. Bad discipline. Anyhow, we've got something more important to talk about today. Eh, hey, Werner? Hmm? When are you two going to get hitched up? Now, there's no hurry, Paul. There you go again. What a passion you have for keeping people waiting. <laughs> when will you be back? I don't know. Perhaps in only a few weeks' time. Make it soon. Yes, you better. They tell me the stormtroop leader's a very good-looking fella. <laughs> <laughs> losing my little Lena, too. Oh? You won't be losing me, Daddy. Well, she's off to a labor camp. I shall only be gone for a short time, and besides, I shall be helping to build a greater Germany. Really? Our Führer says it's the young people that will lead our country to its rightful place in the world. Well, these are big thoughts for such a little girl. Oh, she's become a great politician since the stormtroopers came. But, you know, I'm afraid she's not strong enough to go to a labor camp. You wait, Daddy. When I come back, I shall be very strong. Well, I hope so. Come along, say goodbye to the Herr Pastor. Goodbye, Herr Pastor. Goodbye, Lena. Good luck. We'll all miss you, especially Christine. <laughs> this is this Pastor Hall's house? Yes, sir. Just a minute, please. 
Fräulein Christine, there's a stormtrooper here. Well, show me. Heil Hitler. The Herr Pastor, please. Stormtrooper to Gatter. Good morning. I'm afraid my father isn't in. You are his daughter? Uh, yes. Uh, would you care to sit down? Uh, thank you. No, I'm exceedingly busy. I have no time to wait about. But if you're quite sure he won't be long. Oh, I'm sure he won't. Um, will you have a cigarette? Thank you. What do you think of our village? Very backward, I'm afraid. Quite untouched by the new spirit of National Socialism. That's why I'm here. To put new life into the place. We're very happy here. Perhaps that's why we're not so keen on changes. Happiness is not our main concern. Then what is? The greatness and the glory of Germany. And to this end, all petty personal happiness must be sacrificed. Everything that stands in the way shall be crushed. Sounds very ruthless. Rather like digging up all the plants in one garden and only trying to grow one. Rather a stiff and prickly looking plant too. We have a colossal task ahead of us, and we shall achieve it. If we receive voluntary help, we shall be thankful. If not, we shall find other means to get it. But Germany must be great and must be feared. Well, why should Germany or any country want to be feared? You are a woman. Women were not meant to understand. <laughs> you don't approve of women. On the contrary. Oh, here's Father. Hello, Christine. Father, this is Stormtroop leader Goethe, who's going to change our village completely. This is my father. Hi, Hitler. How do you do? Sit down, we must have a chat. Well, I think I'll leave you. I'm sure you two men have things to discuss far beyond my poor woman's brain. Do you know I believe she's pulling our leg? Yeah? Sit down. Thank you. Herr Pastor, I am told that you have great influence among the villagers. Well, I've always tried to earn their friendship. My purpose in coming here is to secure your cooperation. Well, of course, anything I can do. But cooperation for what, exactly? To bring Altdorf into line with the rest of the Reich. To instill the one doctrine, nation and fatherland. As our Führer has told us, we are fighting for our security, for the existence and increase of our race, for the nourishment of its children, the purity of its blood. The fulfillment of the mission appointed for the fatherland by the creator of the universe. I see, yes. It's rather a tall order. Of course, I'm not interested in politics. I'm so full of the villagers and their little worries and troubles. They're quite big to them, of course. That is just where you can help. I've always believed in rendering unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And in this village, it seems that you are to be Caesar. Exactly. Now we can get down to business. First of all, who are the people who should be dealt with? Dealt with? Communists? Socialists, pacifists, Jews, enemies of the state? Oh, I'm afraid I don't regard the villagers as either socialists or communists or even nationalists. And the few Jews we have are quite good people. We don't recognize good Jews or bad Jews, just Jews. I certainly don't know any enemies of the state. You're not being very helpful, Herr Pastor. I'm sorry, but I can't help it. You see, I know these people. I like them. I don't regard them as saints, but there isn't one whom I'd describe as wholly bad. In that case, Herr Pastor, I am afraid I'm wasting my time. I wish you a good day. Goodbye. I don't think you'll find your task so sweeping as you suppose. There's nothing much the matter with our village. We shall see. We'll come in again, won't you? Any time you feel like it. Thank you. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Gardening? You're very upset. May I help? But surely it's beneath the dignity of a stormtroop leader to stoop so low. Fräulein Hall. I thought you'd gone. What do I do? Well, you, you pull them out like this. And then you, you throw them in there, like that. Nice little garden you have here, haven't you? Yes, I love gardening, don't you? Oh, I have my duties, which take most of my time. You take yourself so seriously, don't you? 
Your life is serious, Fred. Yes, but you must relax sometimes. I'd like to know what you do when you're off duty. I'd like to see you rolling in the grass or, or making yourself sick with toffees. I'd like to see you at meals. Do you click your heels at the table and hold your fork like a bayonet? Perhaps if the Fräulein were to invite me. Oh, yes, of course. Um, perhaps you'll be busy. I have no special duties on Tuesday, if that night would be convenient. Oh, Tuesday would be fine. scripture today is the story of David and Goliath. Now this story shows that it isn't always the big and the strong who win the battle of the... Herr Ritter wants to see you, Herr Pastor. Oh, will you please tell Herr Ritter that I haven't finished the scripture lesson yet? Herr Ritter said that the children must get ready for the outdoor exercises. All right. I'll see Herr Ritter. And remember, you are in the Hitler Youth Movement to be trained as future soldiers for the Fatherland. Well, you may go now, I'm busy. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Come in. Morning, Herr Ritter. You wanted to see me? Yes, I've wanted to establish contact with you before, but I can't imagine what a state I found this place. I simply don't know where to start. Well, couldn't Dr. Kerner help you? Herr Kerner has been superseded. I see. He's taught in this school for 30 years. Precisely. There are new things to be taught now, and that's what I wanted to see you about. Now, regarding the scripture lessons... I'll sit down, if you don't mind. As I was saying, regarding the scripture lessons, the new regulations contain nothing against them in principle, provided they're taught along the party lines. And what exactly are the party lines? And briefly, Avoid the Old Testament as much as possible. Try to connect the text of the Bible with current events. Develop love of the Fuhrer and the nation. Yes, avoid any reference to the Jews or the chosen people. Uh, don't enlarge on pity too much. Never refer to love in the sentimental, humanitarian way, but rather in the active, Nordic sense. Give the example of winter relief. Is that all, Herr Ritter? Yes, I think so, Herr Pastor. If you like, you can take this little booklet along with you. It may help you to understand the party lines. Oh, I think I do understand. Very well. If you have any questions in the future, I shall always try to spare you a few moments. Thank you. I don't think I'll disturb you very much. Good day. <laughs> What has happened to her, Mara? Nothing much, Herr Pastor. What is the reason for it? My mother's mother was Jewish. 
Why didn't the neighbors do something? They've learned to keep away when unpleasant things happen. They couldn't have done much anyway. Oh, let me help you. Thank you, help, Master. But there's not much to be done now. Good night. Or should we say, Heil Hitler? Wilhelm Scharf. Investigations indicate that he is suspected of communist sympathies. Shall I have him arrested? No. Have him watched. See who his friends are. We make it a bigger bag. Yes. Number 33, Franz Wendt. Small holder. All... Come. Hi, Hitler. Master Horner, see you. I'll get rid of him. No need for you to see him. I'll see him. This pastor has a lot of influence here. That's not true, A number of things have happened in this village. I can't believe it, but I'm told that your stormtroopers are responsible. What is your complaint, Herr Pastor? Well, firstly, a number of obscene posters have been put up in the village. And as a direct consequence, a band of hooligans have smashed old Mara's shop. Everybody knows that Mara is a harmless, a decent old man. I ordered the posters to be put there, Herr Pastor. But I'm also aware of what happened to the shop. Surely you don't sanction this. He is a Jew. But there's no place for Jews in the Third Reich. I believe that every man has the right to live in friendliness with his neighbor. No matter what his race or creed. These are dangerous beliefs. Why? I suggest to her, Pastor, that it would be better for you to keep such views to yourself. The new Germany does not tolerate criticisms of its most sacred beliefs. I put this to you as a friend. I thank you. But I cannot be silent in the face of this attempt to bring to the fore the worst instincts of our people. As I say, I wish to be friends with you. I recognize that you have a task which demands a certain attitude. But I must warn you not to go too far. I take it there is to be no redress. In this case, I'm afraid not. But I'm sure you'll soon see our point of view. By the way, I happened to see your daughter the other day. She was kind enough to ask me to dinner. I see. Good day, Herr Stormtrooper. Hi, Hitler. These religious people got to handle them with kid gloves. And their daughters, too, Fritz. Oh. Easy run, but if I... Friedrich, you ought to let Stefan have a go at you. He'd never be the same man again. Friedrich? I believe you've heard a damn word out of his head. I'd never have believed such things could happen in Altdorf. First the storm was smashing up the shops and setting on people whose politics they didn't like. And now it's spread like some dreadful disease to my own people. I don't seem able to... to reach them anymore. Yes, that's enough. That's enough. I'm not as good as a beast. Now, Friedrich, what's worrying you? The baker's shaft was beaten up in the inn last night. Mm, I heard. He said that Hitler might be wrong. Oh, blasted rebel. Same thing's going on all over the country. Look at this. I got this from a friend today in Amsterdam. Oh, horrible, horrible. Shooting one's own comrades. Fellows who fought by one side. When I think of what Germany meant to the world, this couldn't have happened in our day. We had values and loyalties then. I've tried to see their point of view. There must be something in it if a whole nation could be swept off its feet. I've even had that stormtroop leader to the house. You what? Yes, I'm asking him again tonight. It was magnificent. 60,000 people cheering like mad. But when the Fuhrer rose to speak, you could hear a pin drop. No one dropped one, did they? It is not a joking matter, for Hall. The stormtroop leader is right, Christine. Please go on with your story. If not, Herr Pastor, it seems to me that the ideals of National Socialism find little sympathy in this house. Because we don't understand them. If so far I have not been attracted to National Socialism, it's because it seems to me to encourage the two things 
I've always tried to fight against. Lust for power and fear. Perhaps I'm wrong. We believe in the rule of the strong. The glory of Germany can only survive if we cut the canker from the organism. As doctors, you're not always very gentle. Surgeons must have courage to cut. True, but they must also have a thorough knowledge of the human body. Otherwise, they'd be merely murderers. Uh, Pastor. Oh, don't worry about Daddy. He's always dropping bricks. Oh, please, please. I didn't mean anything personal in any way. I'm afraid we can find no common ground, unless you admit the right of a superior race to shape its life according to its historic mission. Well, we Christians believe that the spirit dominates, or should. And anybody who believes with us is one with us. There are many pastors who understand their task as our Führer wishes it to be understood. You despise men, don't you? No, I don't think so. Man has only to obey to be happy. Obedience is not the final virtue. With us it is. I take orders from one who knows men and yet doesn't despise them. He trusts them with this great danger of freedom. He gives them the choice, though they often choose wrong. For when a man loses his freedom, he ceases to be a man. Would you please, sir, can I lie here? Master, please come quickly, if I can. Please come quickly. Yes, yes, I'll come at once. Excuse me. Look after our guest, Christine. So bad as it seems. He is dead. They've killed him. He's gone. They've killed him. Tell me everything. I was sitting here in this room, knitting a pullover for Erish. So big he is. And a man came to the door. He asked for Frau Kemp. Clara brought him in, and he told me to send her away. Oh, then, then he brought me this. And there's a paper, too. <laughs> oh, my dear God. And the man said, I wasn't to tell anyone that Erich was shot or to have him buried, as he was a traitor. He said it twice, I think. But I wasn't to tell anybody that Eric was shot. <laughs> oh, Pastor, I can't understand it. It can't be. Erich was so tall and strong. They made him one of Captain Holmes' bodyguard. And now... <laughs> These are the mortal remains of Erich Camp, who was a fine man and a good son. One we shall always be proud to have known and to have called our friend. And if we bury him in the dark of night, it is not to his shame that we do so. No grudging hatred of man can keep from him the place which, by his merit and his faith, he will hold in the kingdom of love which passes understanding. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Hello. 
Uncle Paul. Good morning, Christine. You don't look too happy. It's hard to believe the people could change in so short a while. Oh, no guts, that's what's the matter with them. Afraid to be too pleasant because of the stand your father's taken up. Over the way, I've got some news for you about Werner. Yes, I know. He's coming home. Mm, about time. Tell father I've gone home, will you? I will if I wait. He's late again, you know. He's been late every Sunday for the last five years. Or have you been early? Never thought of that. Ryan Hall. Will you come inside for a few minutes? I want to speak to you. Sorry. I'm busy. The pastor and the general haven't gone by yet. I think you'll be advised to hear what I've got to say. It's about your father. Very well. Won't you sit down? I've waited specially for you, because you seem most anxious to avoid me whenever possible. Quite frankly, I don't think we've got very much to talk about. What was it you wanted to tell me about my father? Can't we have a talk like friends? Cigarette? Why don't you say what you've got to and let me go? Very well. Perhaps you would care to have a look at this. This is an account of your father's activities against the state. Beginning with the funeral of the camp boy, the speech he made then, and everything he has said and done since. Today, Fräulein Hall, I received a letter found on a Mr. Maurer. As he was about to leave the country, which for reasons of no interest to you, we did not consider the right course for him to take. No doubt you recognize your father's handwriting. What about it? He asked a friend of his to help Mara. This can't be a crime, even according to your ideas. Your father is recommended as his personal friend and enemy of the state. Have you called me here to display your powers? To admire your horrible spy system, which has turned a happy village into a crowd of informers and frightened people? Do you want me to congratulate you on your achievements? Really? This is not like the pastor's lovely, gentle daughter. Now listen to me, will you? Every paper in this file is enough to send your father to prison. Men have been beheaded for much smaller offences. Perhaps you'd like to know why your father wasn't taken away after we found out about the funeral. Why he was allowed to continue with his activities. I'll tell you why. Because someone has protected him. No, not the father in heaven, as you might suppose. But stormtroop leader Fritz Goethe. Why have you done all this? You know very well why. What do you expect me to do about it? You're a clever girl, Christine, and I want you to use your brains. Ask yourself whether yours is the right attitude towards someone who is risking so much for your sake. I'll talk to Father. I promise you he'll be more careful. That's very good, Christine, but I'm afraid it is not quite enough. What do you want? Think of me as someone who has helped you and who does not enjoy being treated like a piece of dirt. Take your time to think over what I've said. Can I go now? Oh, certainly. Father? Yes, my dear? You weren't sleeping. No, I couldn't get off somehow. You're worried, aren't you? Yes, I am a little. Pepper man came to me after the service today. Said they all want me to stop my criticisms. Will you? I don't know. I don't want to make it hard for the people. Father, perhaps you could be a, well, a little more careful. Oh, is the new spirit winning you too? No, of course not. But I do think you underrate the danger. Oh, I don't think there is any, my dear. By the way, I didn't see little Nina in church this morning. I know, she practically used to live here. Since she came back from the labor camp, she hasn't called once. I would never believe that the Vites Well, could... don't begin now. When you start doubting your friends, there's only one thing to do. Let's go straight to them and have it out. Is it? Yes, my dear, that's what we're going to do. Come along. Oh. Hello, Herr Pastor. Good afternoon, Herr Weiss. I wanted to speak to your church today, but you left so quickly. Yes, yeah. Had some urgent business for Lion Christine. Why don't you go to ask Zilla, Herr Fight? Of 
course, Herr Pastor. Come in, please. I'm sorry, you see, I wasn't expecting them. Uninvited guests on the Sabbath, eh, Herr Wright? Oh, it isn't that. Where is Lena? We haven't seen her since she came back. Oh, Lena isn't very well. Oh, the poor dear. Uh, uh, that's why I... Uh... Is she in her room? I'll go up and see her. Oh, Fräulein. She's asleep. I don't want her disturbed. Well, don't worry, Herr Weit. I'll go very quietly. All right, Christine. I'm sorry there isn't a fire. We're back. We've been friends for a long time. Won't you tell me what's the matter? Herself. I couldn't believe it either, but it's true. It's true. I should never have let her go to the labor camp. You know what was the matter? I didn't understand. Now I've brought disgrace on that in it. She can't hold up his head anymore. Do you know the name of the boy? Yes. Lena did tell me. Helmut Weber. Helmut Weber. And the camp? Kumbach. My dear pastor, hundreds of girls pass through this camp every month. You can't expect me to inquire into the morals of each one of them. It isn't a question of morals in this case. I've known the girl all her life. She's only a child. Yes, yes, I know. A young, innocent girl suddenly finds herself in trouble through no fault of her own. It's an old story. I hear it every day. And you do nothing about it? This is a labor camp, not a kindergarten. My job is to turn these boys and girls into virile, obedient German citizens, conscious of the destiny of their race. Herr Commandant, I fear that you and I speak a different language. But this I hope I can make you understand. This girl, Lena, came here, filled with pride in the belief that she could serve her Führer and her fatherland. She has returned home broken in spirit, humiliated, dismayed. Surely that is not the way you're going to make her conscious of the destiny of her race? Well, what do you suggest I can do? We can at any rate try and undo some of the evil that's been done. I'd like to speak to the boy responsible. Very well, if you think it worth your while. The name? Helmut Weber. Helmut Weber? Why, you must be mad. This boy is the nephew of one of the biggest men in the country. Someone right at the top. I am not concerned with his social position. I want to ask if you'd be prepared to marry him. Marry? You are mad. A boy with a brilliant career ahead of him? What of the girl's career? She seems to have fixed that for herself. The supreme career of every true German woman, to be the mother of future Germans. Herr Commandant, this girl is only 14. She isn't old enough. Biologically speaking, she has proved that she is. Herr Pastor, you're making a lot of fuss about nothing. What has happened to this girl is, after all, what she was made for. To call it a tragedy is reactionary nonsense. And National Socialism has no time for that sort of thing. Now I'm afraid I'm busy. Good day. I've been looking after her while her fight was out. How is she? Father, she's so miserable. Hello, Hans. Ah, Friedrich. Christine, tell me where you'd gone. Any news? They'd do nothing. Mm, I was afraid of that. Father, I'll go up to her. How is she? I must tell you the truth. I don't think Lena is going to live. What? It's an ordeal even for a grown woman. She's such a delicate little thing. She hasn't the strength or the will. But there must be something we can do. Yes, we can pray for her. That's about all there is to do. The only real way we could help her, we daren't. 
It's a crime against the state wanting soldiers for the next war. But isn't there anything I can do? If you can alter her frame of mind, make her feel happier, freer from shame and fear, she might have a chance. But you mustn't worry about it, Lena. Who's that? It's me, Pastor Hall. Don't let him come in. Don't let him come in. Oh, don't be silly, dear. Come in, Father. Hello, Lena. a smile for an old friend. Well, Pastor, I'm so ashamed. Now, you have nothing to be ashamed of. No one can blame you for something that happened without your fault or your understanding. They will have, Pastor. I know they will. They'll say I've been wicked and they'll point at me and stare. They'll say I'm bad and that I brought disgrace on them all. I couldn't stand it, Lord Pastor. I couldn't stand it. Quiet, Lena, quiet. You're imagining horrors that will never happen. The people here are your friends. They're not going to turn against you now just because you've had a little trouble. No, it'll make them love you all the more. Do you really think so, Pastor? I know it will. You're just frightening yourself. Why, well, you're even scared of me. Now, you're coming to church next Sunday. I look out for you. And you'll sit there, as you always used to, listening to the sermon, with your big blue eyes wide open. Do you mean I may come to church? Thanks, sir. You must. Now, I shall be disappointed if you don't. You won't disappoint me, will you? I promise. And, Lena, I want you to remember one thing more. It's the world's most beautiful story. How a young mother, almost a child like you, had to ride on a donkey. And she was so poor and friendless that she could only find shelter in the stable. There were people who despised even her and refused to let her in. There have always been wicked and silly people in the world. I'm afraid they haven't changed much in 2,000 years. But here you're among friends. And even if one should be unjust or say cruel things to you, just remember what they said to her. You do that for me? Promise. Now forget about such things. What may seem ugly and frightening now can become a thing of great beauty. Goodbye, dear. I get dressed, Lena, and come downstairs. And don't forget next Sunday. I won't forget. about Lena, I can ease your mind. I've convinced her that the people here will be sympathetic and understanding. They won't have, Pastor. It isn't true. Now you're imagining things. It isn't imagination. I've heard the things they're saying about Lena. What things are they saying? Oh, cruel, heartless things. But I don't believe that anyone even knows. Oh, they all know. They're all talking about her. Pippa man's got hold of it somehow. He says she's a Jezebel and ought to be turned out of the village. I shouldn't pay any attention to Pipperman. We all know what he is. It's not only Pipperman that Frau Linda says that even if she shows her face in the street. Don't worry, they won't do anything. I'll see to that. What can you do? I'll go to every one of the villagers if need be. I'll make them see how unjust, how despicable they are being. Uh, people aren't like they used to be. They become bitter and cruel. But I, I implore you. Don't let Lena even suspect the things that are being said. But she will hear. I promise you, I will stop these evil tongues. Thank you, Herr Pastor. I'll go up and tell her you're home. Now she'll be down in a minute. Don't let her see that you've been upset. No, I won't. <laughs> you're very good to us all, Herr Pastor. <laughs> Mr. 
Lena didn't kill herself. She was murdered by National Socialism. There's nothing we can do now. I can do what I should have done before. If I hadn't failed in my duty, Lena might be alive tonight. But they're too strong. Truth is strong. Honesty and faith are strong. My weapons are the weapons of God. I will make my people see the evil of this faith they are embracing. Father, you mustn't. These people will stop at nothing. Already they have records of things you've said and done. I, too, have a record of what they have done. Oppression, brutality. On Sunday in the pulpit, I will read it. It will be its own indictment. I will pray my people to join me in fighting this vile disease. Father, I'm afraid. Christine, we can think of ourselves no longer. It is the test that I knew was coming, and I shall not cry. Oh, Lord, why hast thou chosen me? One litre today, please. Sorry, only half a litre allowed. New order of the Nazis. We have to draw in our belts. They'll be drawing their belts round their necks before our pastor's finished with them. He's going to give them something to think about. What's the pastor going to do? He's got a whole list of everything bad that's happened since the stormtroopers came here. He's going to urge the British to fight National Socialism. And you know what else she told me? Thanks for the information, Bibberman. I shan't forget. Thank you, Herr Stormtroop Leader. But with me, duty is its own reward. And I have never been one to try to profit by the small services I give my neighbours. Yes, yes, yes. Good day. But if the Hare Storm Troop leader feels impelled to make some return for the favour I have done him, then uh, perhaps the next time his men's boots need repairing, I can assure the Hare Storm Troop leader I use only the very best leather. All right, Pepperman. They shall come to you, even if you use the very best cardboard. Now get out. Thank you, Hare Storm Troop leader. That finally cooks your pastor's goose, I suppose. Shall I arrest him? No. Now keep your eyes shut. Now you can open them. Uncle, what is it? Verna. Christine. Stop it. Let's have a look at you. There was a lion that wasn't there before. And a wrinkle around your mouth. You've been laughing too much. Darling, it's lovely to have you back. So many things have happened. I know, darling. I've heard of nothing else since I came back. But don't let's worry about that now. <clears throat> There's nothing I enjoy more than disturbing a couple of lovers. I suppose it is because nobody wants to hug me nowadays. Don't be silly, Uncle Paul. It's funny, you know. You only get the nicest bit of the joint when you've got no teeth left to bite it with. By the way, have you told her? What do you think I should, sir? Oh, why not? She's got to know sometime. All right. Well, you're going to be married. Yes, I know that. Ah, but you don't know you're going to be married tomorrow. Don't be silly. No, I mean it. Look, Christine, I've been offered the most wonderful job in America, and they want me to leave at once. Oh. I know it's a bit of a rush, but... When it's the chance I've been waiting for, and I mustn't lose it. Ah, oh, Friedrich, it's all fixed up. Oh, splendid, splendid. Daddy, Vienna, I can't go yet. Not until I know. Paul, this little girl of mine imagines I can't get on without her protection. Nonsense. I look after the old scoundrel. I can do. I may be an old war horse, but I'm not a lame one. No, I... I can't go. But, Christy, nonsense. My dear, you're overwrought. What you want is a change of air. You're right, Paul, you're right. Well, let's get to the wedding feast. Come along. Unless, of course, you'll finish the dinner again. The pastor, please. He's engaged at the moment. I... Where's his study? It's there, but he's not in it. Please tell him I'm waiting for him. Would you come out a moment, Herr Pastor, please? Excuse me, please. Now he's going to keep us waiting again. <laughs> so it is true you have decided to denounce National Socialism from the pulpit. Your information, as usual, is correct. 
I have come here to warn you for the last time, Pastor. Please put those notes back on my desk. No. I have the right to confiscate dangerous documents wherever I find them. You are wasting your time here, Gertrude. I shall still speak. Very well. Will you please call Fräulein Christine here? I wish to speak to her. No, I'm afraid that's impossible. It would be in your interest as well as hers if you call her here at once. I'm not going to interrupt the little family party we're now having. Christine is getting married to General von Gretchen's son. They're leaving Altdorf immediately. I don't think there'll be time for another talk. I see. You'll excuse me. A little of what you fancy does you good, as the girl said to the soldier. Oh, don't you think you'd better try another kind of story, Father? No, no, Werner. Your father's going to be allowed to say what he likes tonight. Nobody's going to be shocked. Oh, but you won't get another whistle out of me. Prim as a Puritan. What's he going to say to you? Nobody's going to be shocked. <laughs> well, thank heaven this isn't going to be one of your sniffy weddings, with uncles and aunts tearing every stitch off the bride's back. <laughs> Look at all the presents I shall be missing. Pretty tough on me, you know. I shall have to be inside the church tomorrow. Can't go pacing about waiting outside for you, Friedrich. Well, I promise you I'll make it short. Well, there's something to be hoped for. It doesn't seem real at all. You know, I simply can't believe I'm going to leave all Oh, don't get sentimental or I shall cry into my wine. Oh, there's no harm in looking back, but there's so much to look forward to. You better toast the young couple, Paul. What, me? Oh, no. I can fight and curse and command and spit. But don't ask me to make a speech. Besides, that's your job anyway. Oh, all right. Here's to you, Christine. And to you, Werner and to your future in a free and great country. Here's to your strength and your happiness and the lives that you build for yourselves without interference. And here's to the day when we shall come back and take you both away with us. And here's to our future grandchildren. The little soldier, the little parson, and the kicks they'll give each other all day long. I shouldn't be surprised if the little parson got the better of the little soldier. Well, at least you know what's coming to me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Master Friedrich Hall, you are now a prisoner of the state. Please come. May God be praised. Daddy, you can't take him. He hasn't done anything. How dare you? How dare you? Master Hall is an enemy to national socialism and a traitor to the state. March. Listen to me, you dirty scum. What some of you have experienced before is nothing to what you're going to get here. You're coming inside a concentration camp, and that means you're coming to hell. Any attempt at opposing authority, and you'll be shot out of hand. And you'll be wise if you keep away from the wire fence around this camp. It's charged with a thousand volts of electricity. The guards have orders to shoot anyone who approaches it. Every bullet costs 12 fennec, and that is just worth. No more. No less. Now get over to that shed. We're going to make you look pretty. Hi, you there. You with the cat. You mean me? Yes. 
Come here. You see what I mean about keeping him away from that fence? What are you hanging about for? Get into that shed. You are finished. Next. Watch your step with that man. He's the black superior. Put over prisoners like you and me because he's a hardened criminal. He's got a free hand. Please, you mustn't cut my beard. It's against my religion. A Jew with a religion. Put your head back or I'll cut your blasted throat. Next. Name, Friedrich Hall. Profession, pastor. Well, you'll soon get out of that here. Don't expect to be treated soft because you've got a degree and know the Lord's Prayer by heart. Watch your step. Next. I've got a pleasant surprise for you. You've been assigned to Barrack 7. My barrack. Mind you, jump to it when I tell you what to do. Barrack 7, left dress. Number two, put your belly in. Number four, half a pace to your rear. You, did you hear me? I didn't know you were addressing me. Well, you do now. Perhaps you'd be good enough to draw back your right shoulder and place your hands down the seam of your trousers. We don't stand for any individualism. Yeah, Freundlich. Put him in the rear rank. He'll spoil the whole damn squad. Shut your ugly mug. Were you put in charge of this squad or was I? We're now going to join the rest of the camp. Barrack 7, left turn. Quick march. <laughs> there. What the hell do you think you're up to? Fifteen men ill, twenty-seven in detention cells, twenty-two new arrivals. Punishments? Johann Herder. On what grounds? Because while peeling potatoes, he started making propaganda against the state. Herder, step forward. What exactly did you say? No lies, please. We were, we were peeling potatoes. Then a phrase came into my mind which the Apostle Paul wrote. The seed shall be sown in unrighteousness, but shall arise in glory. It shall be sown in weakness, but shall arise in strength. It's meant to be a threat, isn't it? A warning, Herr Commandant. The world is full of sin. Antichrist rules on earth. By Antichrist, perhaps you mean our leader? I mean the spirit of evil, sir. Corporal Ludeca, 25 lashes tomorrow morning. The entire camp to be present. See to it. But I'm too old for such treatment. I gave my sons to the fatherland during the war. I'm 74 years old. That's something you should have thought of before. Fall in. Get back into line.
There are a number of new arrivals here today. I want to make it quite clear that I'll have no slackness in the camp. Greater Germany allows no weakness, no failures, no excuses. You will learn to realize that the state is greater than the individual. There will be special exercise before the evening meal. Corporal Ludecker, you will take over the squad. Hi, Hitler. Squad! <laughs> you run? What's your name? Erwin Cohn. Emigrant, aren't you? Yes, sir. Couldn't the Paris ladies and their undies please you? What do you come back for? What do you think's going to happen to you? i would be allowed to live. You'll be lucky if you're allowed to die. Get back in the line and run. There's your lot. Sit up, my boy. Yeah, this will make you feel better. Thank you. Isn't it yours? No, no, I couldn't eat it. I feel a little sick. Here, yeah, you fat-bellied swine, give me some of that. We're all equal here, you know. And someone's pinched that half loaf of bread of mine, was it you? Well, you stole it from Herder. No damned liar. Not so quick with your hands. I've knocked off better men than you in my time. All right, Kosh, you've been asking for it. Oh, oh, shut up, the pair of them. Haven't you anything better to do than bash your own faces? Don't we see enough violence without that? You shut your mouth or you'll see some violence, all right. Oh, God, if I could only get out of here. Why the devil did you come back if you were safely in Paris? Why? Every morning in Paris, I went for a walk in the Bois de Boulogne. One morning in April, I saw buds on the branches of a tree. Everything smelled of spring. Everybody was laughing and happy for no reason. I, I don't know why. Suddenly, I felt homesick. I couldn't bear the thought of everybody speaking in a foreign language. I saw the birches on the one sea and smelt the scent of the mark. I rushed back to my hotel, packed my bag, borrowed my railway fare, and came back here. Can you understand that? Not me. I prefer my freedom. But isn't it your fatherland also? My fatherland is. Whatever freedom is. I didn't want to believe any longer what was written in the French newspapers. It isn't possible, I said to myself. I've known these men, Muller and Schmidt. They were kind-hearted men who lived and let live. I can't have become murderers and sadists overnight. I felt I had to see them. They'd take me by the hand. If they were a runaway, they'd say. And we'd get over to where Alexander Plotz and him up here. There was one Jew here whom they boiled, salted, and pickled. I can't stand it. I can't stand it any longer. 
tried to make them understand, but they won't listen. Oh, God, get me out of here. Stand in, boy, stand in. Stop that. Did you hear what I said? Stop blubbering, or I'll lay you out. Sorry. You'll soon settle down. But don't start that stuff again. Hey, you. Come out here. Come out here, you stinking pig. He's talking to you. Get outside. Night, there. Why have they taken it? To be beaten up. Make a bit of private sport for the guard. They come and pick their victims every night. See that you'll be worrying too much. Christine. Daddy. Daddy. Oh, my Christine. My Christine. How are you? Paul. Well, old man, it's good to see you. Is it... Is it very bad? Not so bad I can't endure it. That's the important thing. Father, we're going to get you out of here soon. Uncle Paul's been working like mad, seeing his friends and pulling the strings. It's only a matter of time, old fellow. Thank you, Paul. And you too, Christine. Seeing you has given me fresh courage. Sorry, Fraulein, it's time for you to go. But we've only just... Your Highness Dagen. Visiting time's up. Goodbye, Christine. I shall think of you. Don't let them get you down, old man. Please God, I won't. This is a surprise. I haven't seen you since the time I asked you here. I've seen my father. Have you? That's why I've come to you. 
This is flattering. Do you think your future husband would approve? Listen, Fitzgerald, I'm not in the conversational mood. I've just come back from a visit to help. Last time I was here, you told me to think. Well, I've done some thinking these last few weeks. And the conclusion you've come to? Fitzgerald, you got my father into a concentration camp. You must get him out. So that you and young von Gertjan can take him off to America? I might have appealed to you once. But I've learned things lately. If you get my father out, I'll do whatever you say. You have a generous nature, Christine. Very well. I'll get him out of the camp. That's how it is, isn't it? Yes. That's how it is. Very well, Stormtroop Lady Goethe. The terms of the order are quite clear. Conduct the stormtroop leader to Barrack 7. He wishes to speak to the prisoner Friedrich Hall. Very good, Herr Commandant. Heil Hitler. Get up. In there. Stay outside. I want a few words with you, unofficially. Yes. Please forget for a moment that I am your superior officer. You aren't a young man any longer, Pastor Hall. This camp is hard and we can't make exceptions. I've done everything I can. Thank you. But I intend to do more. At great risk to myself, I'm going to get you out of here. Get me out? Yes. Merciful God. You've only to sign this and you will be released. What does it say? Just a paper saying that you will in future refrain from any criticisms of the party or the Führer. Naturally, you will have to keep quiet about everything you have seen. Well? I will not keep quiet at man's behest when God commands me to speak. Don't be a fool, Hall. God can't help you here. No, no, I will not sign. When I leave this place, I'll shout its horrors from the housetops. You are making things damnably difficult. These evils cry aloud to heaven for a voice to denounce them. Silence! No, there'll be no silence now. You and I stand face to face, unmasked in the sight of God. The words I speak will belong to another, not to me, but they shall be spoken. You damn fool, if they hear you, you will be flogged. I dare you to do it. They are here. The time has come, Paul. I implore you. I denounce you in the name of God. And with you, I denounce the rulers of this country, their whole system. This vile growth bred in darkness and in hate, which tortures bodies whilst it murders souls. Decrees that men shall be kicked and beaten like beasts of the field. Drags them on their face when they're too weak to walk. Flog them to death when they whisper the words of God. Stop that, man. I denounce I... this Hitler, architect of evil, Shut creator of human misery. Oh. Put him in solitary confinement. Tomorrow he's to receive 25 lashes before the assembled camp. And the same every morning until further notice. I suggest, her stormtroop leader, that you go. Prisoner, forward. Well, his number's up. Damn fool, stop preaching like that. You're up. If only Germany had more like him. Start the punishment. The prisoner will count. Stop. I ordered the prisoner to count. Count, do you hear? Count. Begin again.
speak up. Speak up. They'll flog him again tomorrow. I can get him out of the camp all right, but that's about all. The rest's up to you. But it must be done tonight. a trap? Do you want to see him shot? Why do you want to help him? They'll flog him again tomorrow. I can't bear it. lashing today. You can't do any more to him. Have your fun with someone else. Any other volunteers? There. It's me. You got a cigarette? Sure.
Christine. Father. Father, dear. Where is this? It's all right, darling. It was Uncle Paul's. Why am I at Uncle Paul's? We brought you here last night after you escaped. Escaped, I remember. There was the, the lights and then the wires. Dagon. Where is Dagon? Dagon was killed. Oh. Father, Uncle Paul is going to get you away from here, and you're going to stay with a friend of his. And then when Vienna and I go to America, you're coming with us. Isn't he, Vienna? Of course he is. We're just going to kidnap you, sir. Thank you, Vienna. God has been very good to me, my friends. Where is Paul? He's planning your escape, just as if it was a major campaign. And as soon as he's got you safely hidden away, he's going to the Minister of War in full uniform, just to insist on your being set free. Free? What? Halt! Right! Start! It's Fritz Goethe and his stormtroopers. We were at least allowed to dream. You're going to help Father to get dressed, then tell Uncle Paul. We must get him out by the back way. I want to see General von Gotjan. This way. Don't tell me you don't know what's happened. To father. What have they done to him? Tell me. He's escaped. When? Last night. He hasn't been recaptured. Not yet. Where's the general? You're not suggesting that... The general has a car. A car was used in your father's escape. Aren't you being rather ridiculous? I intend to examine his car. That won't be necessary. Father. You're my prisoner. Why did you come down? Dagon has been killed. I'm not going to let anyone else suffer for my sake. What the hell's going on? Pastor Hall is my prisoner. He's nothing of the sort. Pastor Hall's under my protection. I'll answer for him. Please, Paul. And you too, Christine. You mustn't become involved in this. Let me go with him. I won't. I won't. If you dare touch him, I'll tell the whole story of how you bargained for father's safety. Come on, you. I fear that I'm master in this house, and I never did like rats about the place. You're all under arrest. But turn. Even you won't get away with this, General. Well, now, take this toy soldier down to the cellar. He's probably drink some of my two I don't think so, Father. The stormtroop leader's going to be rather busy for the next quarter of an hour. Get on. Well, that's that. Now, better get a move on quick before they come after their leader. Are you ready, Friedrich? Oh, it's Sunday. You and Werner, take him out the back way. Better push the car as far as the road and then make for Colonel von Kroll's house. I'll give those of you... I'd forgotten there was such a day. Uncle Yuli has come too. Oh, don't worry, they, they won't touch The morning me. service is beginning. I can't stay here now. At any moment... Oh, have... don't worry about me. I'm enjoying myself. You go along to Von Cross and get him to lend your father some clothes. Paul, could we get as far as the church? What do you mean? My place is in the pulpit. Father! Not wise old fellow. They'll shoot you on sight, you know. Were you wise in what you did? Yes, that's it. Paul, would you desert your men on the eve of a great battle? Don't be damn silly. That is what you are asking of me. Father, darling, please listen to me. I've always stood by you. Even when I realized the dangers into which you were running, 
I didn't ask you to give in and keep silent. Because I knew in my heart that you had to have your way. But now what you want to do is insane. Would you have me creep through my own back door like a criminal? Yes, because you have the right to live. Because we need you too. And I cannot sacrifice the truth even for you. But they won't let you preach. She's right, old man. It's a new pastor. Nazi brand. Father, they'll kill you. I shall live. It will be a fire that no might can put out. Even a very little flame shines very brightly in the darkness. The meek will tell the meek, and they will become strong again. One man will tell another that Antichrist rules. And they will find strength to follow my example. Shall we go? You make me very proud. I've got my pride too. I've been proud of my uniform all my life. My father was proud of it, and his father before him. So if you don't mind, old fellow, I'll come too. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 13, 14, and 15. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, as ye go forth out of that house or that city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Masters here, can't you see? Get out. I have little time in which to speak to you, so I want you to listen with your hearts. The text for this, my last sermon to you, is from St. Paul. Put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Stand, therefore, gird loins about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Some of you may have heard me quote those words before. But I want you today to understand them as perhaps you never have before. I myself have never understood those words as I do at this moment. In the great clearness of evening light with the shadows approaching. Do you really think it would be necessary to use violence? You'll keep out of this. You've done your part, I'll do mine. Remember my orders, he's to be shot trying to escape. And if he does try to escape? He'll be shot trying to escape. We all know that we are men, and it does not seem anything special to us. Yet at one moment in our lives, the realization that we are men may fill us with an ecstasy of happiness, of wonder, and of meaning. Men were meant to fight with this shining sword of the spirit. Men are not mute animals who have to bear injustice silently. They have been given a voice, and that voice is meant to be used as a sword to fight against the evil things. Lies, wickedness, cruelty. The enemies have not changed since St. Paul wrote those words. Only their disguises change. And the voice of man raised in protest must be a trumpet of God and it will be heard. You can shut one mouth, a hundred mouths, a thousand, but the voice will be heard. In spite of stakes, pillories, barbed wire, stronger, louder, more irresistible. You have heard 
of men enduring the agony of death with a smile upon their lips. Because they have the knowledge of something bigger than the mere strength of life, of the body. They die as soldiers on the battlefield of the spirit. Listen. Oh! The same sound of tramping feet was heard by a far greater one than I. Does it matter that they have come to fetch me? You know I shall be with you here when I have gone. You know that my voice will be in your hearts. You will give a message to your children. I shall be with you every Sunday when you pray. I shall be with you when you stand up and fight against that which you know to be wrong. I shall be with you when you cry in despair. And I shall be with you when you triumph over the enemies of God. Let us pray. 